Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to St. Francis Xavier's, particularly those coming from other parishes in the deanery um, or elsewhere. It's lovely to have you with us this evening, and thank you for um, turn, come, coming here. Um, this Mass will be live streamed for um, those that might be joining us um, at home, as some do. So we join with them in prayer. And it's obviously lovely this evening to welcome um, the Archbishop here on his first proper engagement in Hereford since becoming um, Archbishop in Herefordshire. So welcome and do sing up. We've got the sheets and the hymns and we've got our choir up above to lead and we've got a little singing in Tagalog um, at communion as well it's from our Filipino parishioners. So um, do join in. Thank you. Okay, um, shall we pray? Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. welcome you to this station mass uh, this evening in the early life of the church the Christians in a particular area of the city of Rome would gather in one place and walk in procession to one of the churches where the Pope would come and celebrate mass and bishops always wanting to copy a good thing of the Pope decided to do the same and that's how the tradition of station masses emerged. It's a great joy for me to be with you here in this part of the diocese. Uh, my first visit as Archbishop, I want to thank Father Brendan and the community here for their warm hospitality to the deanery. It's very, very good to see some of the priests of the diocese who work in different parishes here in Herefordshire, but also very good to see some of the monks and brothers from Belmont Abbey. We're particularly grateful for their ministry in this part of the diocese. Most of all, during Lent, we gather as a community of disciples of Jesus, seeking to draw closer to him, to follow him as he enters more deeply into the mystery of his passion, death, and resurrection. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie, Eleison. Let us pray. We implore your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as the feast of our salvation draws ever closer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly towards the worthy celebration of the Paschal Mysteries. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. These were my orders. Listen to my voice. Then I will be your God and you shall be my people. Follow right to the end the way that I mark out for you and you will prosper. But they did not listen. They did not pay attention. They followed the dictates of their own evil hearts 
refused to face me and turned their backs on me from the day your ancestors came out of the land of Egypt until today. Day after day, I have persistently sent you all my servants, the prophets, but they have not listened to me, have not paid attention. They have grown stubborn and behaved worse than their ancestors. You may say all these words to them, they will not listen to you. You may call them, they will not answer. So tell them this, here is a nation that will not listen to the voice of the Lord its God and take correction. Sincerity is no more, it has vanished from their mouths. The word of the Lord. Today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Come. Ring out our joy to the Lord. Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come before him giving thanks. With songs let us hail the Lord. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Come in, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the God who made us. For he is our God, and we the people who belong to his pasture, the flock that is led by his hand. today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Mariba, as on that day at Massa in the desert, when your fathers put me to the test, when they tried me, though they saw my work. and honor to you, Lord Jesus. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus. Shake off all your sins. It is the Lord who speaks. And make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus was casting out a devil, and it was dumb. But when the devil had gone out, the dumb man spoke, and the people were amazed. But some of them said, it is through Beelzebul, the prince of devils, that he casts out devils. Others asked him as a test for a sign from heaven. But knowing what they were thinking, he said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is heading for ruin, and a household divided against itself collapses. So too with Satan. If he is divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? Since you assert that it's through Beelzebul that I cast out devils, now, if it is through Beelzebul that I cast out devils, through whom do your own experts cast them out? Let them be your judges then. But if it is through the finger of God that I cast out devils, then know that the kingdom of God has overtaken you. So long as a strong man fully armed guards his own place, his goods are undisturbed. But when someone stronger than he is attacks and defeats him, the stronger man takes away all the weapons he relied on and shared out his spoil. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Jesus Christ. Being with you here this evening on this um, celebration of this station mass, I'm very much reminded of my first few weeks as Archbishop because just within a couple of weeks of becoming the new Archbishop, I was invited to be in Rome with all the other new archbishops of that, of this year, of that year. Um, it's always for the feast of St. Peter and St. Paul. I have a little devotional tradition whenever I go to Rome that I, as soon as possible, go to St. Peter's and try and go as close as I can to the tomb of St. Peter. And last June, very much in my mind and heart, were the priests, the religious, the lay faithful of the Archdiocese of Cardiff and the Diocese of Menevia. So you could say, I have prayed for you before meeting you. And I know that you pray for me. You do so at least every time you come to Mass. It's a source of immense encouragement to me. And now that you've seen me in the flesh, so to speak, I hope you'll pray a little bit more. One of the reasons that particularly Catholic Christians want to go to that holy place 
And it's been like that for, for the earliest centuries. One of the reasons we want to go there is to be as close as we can to the faith of St. Peter. Even in the earliest decades after he was buried, um, those who died afterwards would be buried around him so that when the excavations took place in the middle part of the 20th century of that grave site, they discovered his tomb at the kind of middle and around him in a series of concentric circles, the graves of the other early Christians. It's a symbol of that unity of the Catholic faith. In the gospel, the Jesus, Jesus reminds us that the evil one is the one who tries to bring disunity, disorder, division. But the faith that Peter participates in, that we share, centers on this un unity of the family of the followers of Jesus Christ. And that a bishop is a focus of unity in a particular part of the Lord's vineyard. He is to be in communion with all those other bishops spread across the globe, all of whom are then also in communion with the successor of St. Peter, our Holy Father, Pope Francis. So it's a an immense privilege for us, despite the many difficulties that there are and challenges in living our faith, it's an immense privilege for us to be part of this worldwide Catholic family. And a bishop in each geographical part seeks to strengthen and deepen that sense that we are one. It's, we are a diocese where people have come from many different parts, from many different parts of the country, but also from many different parts of the world, but we are in communion with one another. A few days after that um, meeting, I then met with the successor, as all the new archbishops did, we met with the successor of St. Peter, Pope Francis, and he normally said the same thing to each one of us, which was, pray for me. And I said, of course, Holy Father, I offer you the prayer and the support of all the people, all the religious, and all the priests and deacons of the Archdiocese of Cardiff and the Diocese of Menevia. And he said in English, that's good. Because we believe that this community that we are part of, this family, which is united around Jesus Christ, doesn't just exist in the different parts of the world, but is also in continuity, in unity with that community which first gathered around Jesus Christ and which we hear about in the New Testament, especially in the Pauline epistles, in Paul's epistles. But also we receive through the hands of the apostles the words of the Lord in the gospels. So we believe as Catholics that this faith which was first entrusted to them, this encounter, communion, unity with Jesus Christ, which they first experienced, didn't just exist at one time in one place in first century Palestine, but exists through the centuries, passed on from one generation to another. And a bishop and it's an immense humbling thing for me to admit this. A bishop is a successor of the apostles. 
it's a humbling thing for me to admit that because I know that sometimes bishops fail and are sinful. But nevertheless, it's our Catholic faith that the faith that the Lord entrusted to the first apostles through the generations of apostles, their successors, through the centuries, exists still today. And a bishop in a Catholic diocese is the living presence of that faith which has been passed through those centuries. And calls that one of the great tasks, of course, is to call us to the unity of the faith because we don't just belong to this family because it's a, a nice and beautiful thing, which of course it is, and one can tell from the community here that there is a strong sense of how you support and encourage one another. It's a very good thing for us to be a community in a particular parish or locality. But most of all, we know that it's within the life of the church that we experience Jesus. We encounter him today. And we're called to help others encounter him too. So, and don't take this the wrong way, I'm I don't think I would belong to the church if it was just a nice, kind of cozy little club. The church is the place where I know and you know, I, we, each encounter Jesus Christ. We experience him alive to us. He gives us that life, especially in the sacraments is why it's a very beautiful thing for us to gather tonight for this celebration of the Eucharist. Par excellence, the church teaches, it's in the Eucharist that we most profoundly encounter Jesus Christ. To be able to hear his word and to be able to acknowledge his presence in the Blessed Sacrament and to receive him in Holy Communion. It's a most precious thing for us because the Lord is alive, risen among us, and he wants us to be his instruments that others may know something of the beauty of encountering him too. For Pope Francis on the 10th anniversary of his accession to the papacy, that enlivened by the Holy Spirit, he may continue to proclaim the joy of the gospel and through advocacy for the marginalized and brokenhearted, 
strive to draw all people to Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our For bishops and priests throughout the world, that through renewed Lenten sacrifices, they may bless the church with wise and courageous leadership as the Easter mysteries draw near. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our For Archbishop Mark, we thank God for the blessings he brings to us and pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit, his apostolic ministry in our diocese may be fruitful and lasting. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our for our deanery, that the witness and prayers of St. John Kemble may obtain graces for priests and people so that we give an example of holiness and charity through a deeper conversion to Christ, especially during this season of Lent. Lord, in your mercy. And we ask the intercession of Mary, Mother of Mercy, as we say, Hail Amen. Mary, full, full of grace, grace. the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, women. And, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. Loving Father, you are with us on our journey through the desert. Help us to listen to you so that we may hear the message of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. comes a moment now where um, we install and bless and pray for Father Brendan as the new dean of this deanery of St. John Kemble. So, Father Brendan, are you willing to serve the faithful, religious and clergy of St. John Kemble Deanery in your capacity as dean? I am. Are you willing to assist me in the pastoral care of the faithful, religious, and clergy in this part of our archdiocese? I am. In asking you to undertake this office, I ask you too whether you are willing to uphold the faith of the church and her teaching. I am. We have all heard your willingness to undertake this responsibility. We know you cannot fully exercise it alone, and therefore I ask the priests, religious, and people of the deanery to aid you with their prayerful support. Almighty God, Look with love on Father Brendan, your servant and co-worker with me. You have nourished and protected your church by providing it with holy pastors who are stewards of your word and sacraments. Strengthen our brother as he begins this new ministry among us. And I bless him now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Cleanse your people, Lord, we pray, from every taint of wickedness, that their gifts may be pleasing to you and do not let them cling to false joy, for you promise them the rewards of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
for by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the bread, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis Xavier and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for our saving May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who have been with you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your peace. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your salvation both in mystery and in the manner of our lives. Through Christ our Lord. Please sit down for a moment. First of all, thank you for coming this evening. It's so wonderful to have the parishes of our deanery come together and Herefordshire be represented here this evening. I know it's a miserable old night, a bit wet, and some of you have come from far into the countryside. Um, so thank you for being here this evening, this special occasion. Thank you to our two choirs for singing so beautifully. And everybody, I think, was on good voice this evening. St. Augustine says that when we sing, we pray twice. And I think we have certainly done that this evening in our prayer and worship. It's lovely also to welcome um, fellow priests of the deanery. Um, perhaps not all of you know who everybody is. Father Paul from Lempster. Um, Father Simon from um, Webley and Kington. On the far side, unfortunately, he's got a damaged arm, so not can celebrate him, is Father Adrian from Ledbury. And then for Abbot Paul um, is traveling back from Peru today, so he's not here, but um, Father Augustine, as the assistant parish priest, um, is here representing the Belmont Parish, um, alongside with um, Father Alexander, Father Alex from Belmont as well, who helps out from time to time, including in this parish here. And it's nice also to have our two novices, Brother Meinrad and Brother Gildas, here this evening. So thank you all for coming, and there are refreshments um, afterwards in the parish hall. But of course, a special thanks to Archbishop Mark. Um, he alluded in the homily to being bishop of two dioceses really it's a challenging task and when he's asking for, for our prayers i think he needs it really to care for two dioceses cardiff and menevia and um so quite an extended area and not forgetting this little part this strange part of the world which is england herefordshire in a welsh di uh, welsh archdiocese Welsh province. Um, so we wish you um, the fullness, fullness of God's blessing in your ministry and thank you for being with us this evening. And um, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, well, um, I don't know about this strange part of uh, this diocese, but uh, it's a very beautiful part of the diocese. And um, it's been a great joy for me 
uh, to be able to be among you this evening. And um, you see, I'm too uh, predominantly English, Irish, in a predominantly Welsh <laughs> context. So we we're all a bit mixed up, which is probably a good thing in the church. Uh, I want to, uh, again, echo our thanks um, to Father Brendan uh, and the community here at St. Francis Xavier for um, hosting this deanery mass. And I want to thank Father Brendan especially for assuming also the responsibility as dean to have a, a care, care of the clergy and a care of the people in Herefordshire. Uh, to, it's very important. I, you know, these, these, these roles of leadership, any kind of leadership, leadership in the church or anywhere else, they're, they always have to be exercised, I think, in collaboration and with the support of others. And so, Father Brendan, I thank you most especially uh, for agreeing to take on that responsibility. It's also a joy for me to see a couple of brother diocesan priests here uh, among the Benedictine brothers. Uh, that's also part of the unity of the life of the faith of this church. And one last thing for me, which has touched my heart very deeply, um, I spent many years uh, in the seminary, which is the successor of Dowie College uh, in France, where St. John Kemble uh, trained as a priest. So for many years, I have sung his name um, in uh, particularly the celebration of the martyrs of Dowie. And in fact, I was first named bishop on the anniversary of the martyrs of Dowie. Um, the end of October, the 29th of October. So it's been a great poignancy and a uh, great joy for me to be here in the presence of his relic and in this deanery dedicated to St. John Kemble and to ask especially for his intercession, for courage for us all in the living of our faith today, that we may be faithful in the way that he and so many others were faithful uh, in that challenging time in our country, that we may be faithful to live the faith today. Finally, I just echo to you the words which Pope Francis said to me, and that is to please, please pray for me. We now stand for the blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.